Who was the real Fidel Castro? Fidel Castro led the Cuban Revolution, overthrowing Cuban President Batista in 1959. He then took control of Cuba, installing a communist, Marxist government. He was the absolute ruler of Cuba from 1959 until 2008 when he became ill. What's the story of this man? What did Fidel Castro believe in? And what impact did Fidel Castro have on Cuba? Before we answer these questions, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified as soon as new videos are uploaded. Cuban revolutionary Fidel Castro was born in the Ornenti province of eastern Cuba, the son of a Spanish immigrant who had made a fortune building rail systems to transport sugarcane Fidel attended Roman Catholic boarding school in Santiago de Cuba. Educated in private Jesuit boarding schools, Castro grew up in wealthy circumstances amid the poverty in Cuba, but was also imbued with a sense of Spanish pride from his teachers. From an early age, Castro showed he was intellectually gifted, but he was also something of a troublemaker and was often more interested in sports than studies. He attended Colegio Dolore in Santiago de Cuba and then El Colegio de Belén in Havana, where he pitched for the school's baseball team as well as played basketball and ran track. After his graduation in late 1945, however, Castro entered law school at the University of Havana and became immersed in the climate of Cuban nationalism, anti-imperialism, and socialism, focusing his energies more exclusively on politics. Early Political Insurrections and Arrests Fidel Castro became involved in revolutionary politics while he was a student and in 1947 took part in an abortive attempt by Dominican exiles and Cubans to overthrow Dominican dictator Rafael Trujillo. In the next year, he took part in urban riots in Bogota, Colombia. The most outstanding feature of his politics during the period was his anti-American beliefs. He was not yet an overt Marxist. Castro also joined the Partido Ortodoxio, an anti-communist political party founded to reform government in Cuba. Its founder, Cuban presidential candidate Eduardo Chiba, lost the 1948 election, but inspired Castro to be an ardent disciple. He pledged to expose the government's corruption and warn the people about General Felicio Batista, himself a former president who was plotting a return to power. However, Shiba's efforts were cut short after his supposed allies refused to provide evidence of government wrongdoing. In August 1951, Shiba shot himself during a radio broadcast. Meanwhile, Castro had married Marita diaz Balar, who was from a wealthy political family in Cuba. They had one child named Fidel in 1949. The marriage exposed Castro to a wealthier lifestyle and political connections. At the same time, however, he developed an interest in the work of Karl Marx and became intent on running for a seat in the Cuban Congress. But in March 1952, a coup led by General Fulgencio Batista successfully overthrew the government and the upcoming election was cancelled, leaving Castro without a legitimate political platform and little income with which to support his family. Various groups formed to oppose Batista's dictatorship. And on July 26, 1953, Castro led some 160 rebels in an attack on the Moncada barracks in Santiago de Cuba, Cuba's second largest military base. Castro hoped to seize weapons and announce his revolution from the base radio station, but the barracks were heavily defended and more than half of his men were captured or killed in the attempt. Castro was himself arrested and put on trial for conspiring to overthrow the Cuban government. During his trial, he argued that he and his rebels were fighting to restore democracy to Cuba. But he was nevertheless found guilty and sentenced to 15 years in prison. While incarcerated, Castro renamed his group the 26th of July Movement and continued to coordinate its activities through correspondence. Two years later, Batista felt confident enough in his power that he granted a general amnesty to all political prisoners, including Castro. Castro then went with his brother Raul to Mexico and they organized the revolutionary 26th of July movement, enlisting recruits and joining up with Ernesto Che Guevara, an idealist Marxist from Argentina. Guerrilla War Against Batista Castro did not give up, however. He went to Mexico and planned his revolution. There, he met Che Guevara, who would become an important leader in his revolution. 
Castro and Guevara returned with a small army to Cuba on December 2, 1956. They were quickly defeated again by Batista's army. However, this time, Castro, Guevara, and Raul escaped into the hills. They began a guerrilla war against Batista. Over the course of the next two years, Castro's steadily growing forces waged a guerrilla war against the Batista government, organizing resistance groups in cities and small towns across Cuba. Castro was able to organize a parallel government, carry out some agrarian reform, and control provinces with agricultural and manufacturing production. Beginning in 1958, Castro and his forces mounted a series of successful military campaigns to capture and hold key areas throughout Cuba. Combined with a loss of popular support and massive desertions in its military, Batista's government finally collapsed under Castro's efforts. And in January 1959, Batista himself fled to the Dominican Republic. At the age of 32, Castro had successfully concluded his guerrilla campaign to take control of Cuba. A provisional government was quickly created, with Manuel Ariccia installed as president and José Mira Cardona as prime minister. It quickly gained the recognition of the United States, and Castro himself arrived in Havana to cheering crowds and assumed the post of commander-in-chief of the military. In February 1959, Miro suddenly resigned and Castro was sworn in as Cuba's prime minister. Meanwhile, hundreds of members of Batista's government were tried and executed. Turn to Communism Castro had become a follower of Marxism, and he used this philosophy in creating a new government for Cuba. The government took over much of the industry. They also took control of many businesses and farms owned by Americans. Freedom of speech and the press were also severely limited. Opposition to his rule was generally met with imprisonment and even execution. Many people fled the country. Cuban Life Under Castro after taking power, Castro abolished legal discrimination, brought electricity to the countryside, provided for full employment, and advanced the causes of education and healthcare, in part by building new schools and medical facilities. But he also closed down opposition newspapers, jailed thousands of political opponents, and made no move toward elections. Moreover, he limited the amount of land a person could own, abolished private business, and presided over housing and consumer goods shortages. With political and economic options so limited, hundreds of thousands of Cubans, including vast members of professionals and technicians, left Cuba, often for the United States. From the 1960s to the 1980s, Castro supplied military and financial aid to various leftist guerrilla movements in Latin America and Africa. Meanwhile, relations with many countries, with the notable exception of the United States, began to normalize. Cuba's economy foundered when the Soviet Union collapsed in the early 1990s, and the United States expanded sanctions even further. Yet Castro, who by this time had switched his title from prime minister to president, found new trading partners and was able to cling to power until 2006, when he temporarily gave control of the government to Raul after undergoing emergency intestinal surgery. Two years later, in 2008, he permanently resigned. In 2015, U.S. and Cuban officials announced they had agreed to terms on the normalization of relations between the two nations, with mutual embassies and diplomatic missions opening in each country. Castro died on November 25, 2016, at the age of 90. His death was announced on state television and later confirmed by his brother Raul. Castro's ashes were buried in Santa Afagina Cemetery in the Cuban city of Santiago. That's it for today's video. Don't forget to smash that like button, share this video with your friends, and tell us what you want to see next in the comments section down below.